Hello friends, welcome back to a new video that is MCQs on Medical Microbiology and this is the first part of this series of videos on Medical Microbiology. So let's start the question answer session or MCQ session on Medical Microbiology. So the first question of this video that is factors responsible for the emergence and re-emergence of communicable diseases is or are option A unhygienic living conditions option b invasion by humans to areas so far uninhabited leading to ecological changes option c development of insecticide resistance in vectors or option d all of the above so which one is the responsible factor for the emergence and re-emergence of communicable disease so the right answer is option d that is all of the above are the factors which are responsible for emergence and re-emergence of communicable disease. So now what is communicable disease? So communicable disease are illnesses that spread from one person to another or from an animal to a person or from a surface of or a food. Okay, so communicable disease includes like HIV or AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria, viral hepatitis sexually transmitted disease which are transmitted or spread from one person to another from an animal to a person or from a surface or a, from a food okay so non communicable disease like the cancer is the non communicable disease so these are the communicable disease okay and these are the factors for the emergence and reemergence of communicable diseases so let's move on to question number 2 that is the problem of drug resistance has assumed alarming proportions in option A tuber, uh, tubercle bacilli, option B pseudomonas aeruginosa, option C klebsiella pneumonia, option D all of the above. So, <clears throat> which uh, so the problem of drug resistance, uh, drug resistance is more uh, popular or more alarming in which bacteria? So, the right answer is option D. That is, all of the above are assumed alarming proportion for drug resistance. So, their drug resistance are a genuine problem for this type of bacteria because they are resistant to all of these drugs. Okay, so this is a genuine problem. So, let's move on to question number 3. That is, Following are the examples of re-emerging infections except option A malaria, option B plague, option C AIDS, option D typhoid fever. So which one is the, uh, so here you have to choose the re-emerging -emer, re infections except that is option C. So this AIDS is not a re-emerging infection okay so but other these are the re-emerging uh, infections so what is re-emerging infection this re-emerging infections are diseases that have previously been major health problems but have declined and then become health problem again okay so some example of re-emerging infections include malaria tuberculosis dengue chikungunya so their infection or their uh, effectiveness or Infect, uh, infectiveness is uh, higher in previously but then they decline in their infectiveness and again they become health uh, they create health problems so that is called the re-emerging re-emerging infections okay so this type of malaria plagues typhoid fever these are the re-emerging infection but AIDS is not a re-emerging infection okay so right answer is AIDS so next question they can get next is which of the following organisms may lead to pseudomembrane formation in the throat? So options are option A Corinibacterium diphtheri, option B Streptococcus pyogens, option C Candida albicans, option D all of the above. So which one is the right? That is option D is the right one. So all of the above is the right answer. So which organism may lead to pseudomembrane formation in throat? That is Corinibacterium diphtheri, Streptococcus pyogens, and Candida albicans. All okay. So, what is pseudomembrane? So, a pseudomembrane is a false membrane that can form in the eye 
during inflammations and infections so it can also be thick gray coating that cover tissues in the throat nose tonsils and voice box so this is a false membrane okay so let's move on to question number five it is which of the following organisms can be found normally in the throat so options are option a hemolytic streptococci option b coagulase negative staphylococci option c hemophilus hemophilus uh, hemolyticus or option d all of the above so the right answer about the general or normal organism found normally in the throat that is option d this all this all these organisms we can found in our throat normally okay next is question number six that is infectious disease that uh, infectious diseases the incidence of which in humans has either increased during the last two decades or threatened to increase in near future also known as option a emerging infection option b re-emerging infections option b both of the above or option d none of the above so the right answer is option a so so infectious diseases the incidence of which in humans has either increased during the last two decades or threatened to increase in near future is known as emerging infection okay so let's move on to question number seven that is infectious diseases that have reappeared after a significant decline in their incidence are known as option a emerging infection option b re-emerging infection option c both of the above option d none of the above and the right one is option b that is re-emerging infection so re-emerging infection already we have talked about it so re-emerging infections are infectious disease that have reappeared after a significant decline in their incidence <coughs> incidence or uh, appearance okay so let's move on to question number eight that is which of the following bacteria is the commonest tract infection so options are option a escherichia coli option b pseudomonas aeruginosa option c staphylococcus aureus option d uh, <clears throat> sorry uh, option c stepto uh, staphylococcus aureus and option d staphylococcus saprophyticus okay so which one is the right one about the commonest tract infection so the commonest tract infection is caused by option a that is estasia coli okay so next question is question number nine that is in which of the following sexually transmitted diseases genital ulcers is or are painless and the options are option A syphilis, option B uh, cancroid, option C herpes genitalis or option D all of the above. So the right one is option A that is syphilis. So in syphilis which is a sexually transmitted disease where genital ulcers is or are painless. Okay. So let us move on to question number 10. It is which of the following agents may cause aseptic meningitis in immunocompromised host and the options are option a herpes simplex virus option b enterovirus option c arbovirus option d all of the above so which one is the right one the right one is option d all of the above so all of these viruses may cause aseptic meningitis in immunocompromised host okay so let's move on to question number 11 that is Symptoms of Escherichia coli infection is option A dysentery, option B cough, option C fever, option D all of this. This is very easy. That is the right answer is option A that is dysentery. So the symptom of Escherichia coli infection is dysentery. Okay. So next question is question number 12 that is Clostridium botulinum produces symptoms such as option A paralysis, option B pain option c fracture option d none of these and the right one is option a that is paralysis okay so next question they can get next is question number 13 it is routine laboratory diagnosis of bacterial pharyngitis needs to include procedures only for the detection of option a 
Bordetella pertussis, option B, Corinibacterium diphtheri, option C, Corinibacterium hemolyticum, or option D, group A, Streptococcus. So, which one is the right? The right answer is option D, that is group A, Streptococcus. So, routine laboratory diagnosis of bacterial pharyngitis needs to include procedures only for the detection of group A streptococcus and what is pharyngitis bacterial pharyngitis is a short throat caused by a bacterial infection so this is a one type short throat okay is known as bacterial pharyngitis which cause or which uh, cause the disease or infection in the pharynx uh, the opposite side of the throat okay other side of the throat okay so let's move on to next question that is question number 14 so retroviruses like the influenza virus escape the detection of pre-existing antibodies in the host by generating surface antigen variants so they do so by editing the surface antigen post translationally or option b because rna polymerase of these viruses display high mutation rate during rna synthesis or option c because the surface antigens are attacked by the proteases present in the host cell or option d because dna polymerase of the host mutates the viral genome in the infected cell so the right answer is option b that is because rna polymerase of these viruses display high mutation rate during RNA synthesis. So, retroviruses like the influenza viruses escape the detection of pre existing antibodies in the host by generating surface antigen variants. They do, they do so by because RNA polymerase of these viruses display high mutation rate during RNA synthesis. Okay, so let us move on to question number 15. That is, which of the following agents may cause aseptic meningitis in immunocompromised host and the options are option a cryptococcus neoformans option b estrusia coli option c haemophilus influenzae or option d streptococcus pneumoniae and the right one is option a that is cryptococcus neoformans so this cryptococcus neoformans <coughs> is the agent which may cause aseptic meningitis in immunocompromised host okay so let's move on to question number 16 that is which of the following agents is the commonest cause of infective endocarditis and options are option a staphylococcus epidermidis option b candida species option c viridans group of streptococci or option d coliforms and the right one is option c that is viridin group of streptococci so which of the following agent is the commonest cause of infective endocar uh, endocarditis that is viridin group of streptococci and this endocarditis is a life threatening inflammation of the inner leaning of the heart's chamber and valves this leaning is called the endocardium uh, that's why it is called endocarditis this disease is called endocarditis okay so let's move on to question number 17 so which of the following agents can cause diarrhea and options are option a rotavirus option b vibrio cholerae option c salmonella typhenurium or option d all of the above and the right one is option d that is all of the above is the right one so which of the following agent can cause diarrhea that is rotavirus vibrio cholerae salmonella typhi all these organisms can cause diarrhea okay so let's move on to question number 18 that is which of the following bacteria is implicated as causative agent of non gonococcal uh, erythritis and the options are option a chlamydia trachomatis option b uriplasma erylyticum option c mycoplasma hominis or option d all of the above is responsible for so which one is the responsible for bacteria which can uh, cause the non gonococcal erythritis and the right answer is option d that is all of these organisms can 
act as a causative causative agent of non gonococcal urethritis so non gonococcal urethritis is a urethral infection caused by germ other than gonorrhea that is known as non that's why it is called non gonococcal urethritis okay so let's move on to question number 19 that is genital discharge is present in option a carcoid option b gonorrhea option c herpes genitalis or option d uh, lymphogranuloma venerum so the right answer is option b that is gonorrhea so genital discharge is present in gonorrhea okay so the last question of this video that is which of the following bacteria can cause purulent meningitis and the options are option a haemophilus influenzae option b streptococcus pneumoniae option c neisseria neisseria meningi meningitis or option d all of the above so the right one is option d that is all of the above are bacteria which can cause purulent meningitis so what is purulent meningitis this purulent meningitis is a bacterial infection of the sub aracoid uh, space so the sub aracoid space consists of the cerebrospinal fluid major blood vessels and systems which provide support and stabilization to the brain and spinal cord so purulent meningitis is uh, more or less related to brain or spinal cord infection okay so these are all 20 questions of this part 1 video on medical microbiology okay so thank you for watching this video